Hello everyone, today we're going to check out another topic that will be relevant for your AZ305 exams. We're going to take a look, very quick look, at something called Azure Batch. Now, what about if you had a script or you had a piece of computing code that you wanted to run that had some form of a defined output in a high performance computing environment? Say, for example, you had some 3D rendering to do. Maybe you're making a new 3D movie. And on the evenings, you want to spin up lots and lots and lots of computers, perform that rendering operation, have this defined output at the end of it. Or maybe you might do other things. Maybe you might do things like financial modeling, or maybe you, maybe you do things like media transcoding. Maybe you've got lots and lots of MP4 files that you need to convert from one to another format. You don't want to do those all in parallel, uh, sorry, all in serial, one after the other on a single computer. But what you might want to do is spin up lots and lots and lots of computers to perform that operation and then destroy them at the end. That's what Azure Batch allows us to do. So let's get straight into this and take a look at this Azure Batch feature. Let's do a small whiteboard just to draw this out. So Azure Batch itself is really just a collection of virtual machines, just a collection of VMs, okay? So what you're really doing is you might have some code that you want to run. Say, for example, you had some Python code, um, and that Python code might be running something that you need to produce a financial model for. So this Python code or this PY code, uh, we want to, for example, execute this. And when it does execute, we get a defined output. Maybe that output would be something like a CSV file, or maybe it's something like a JSON file, something along those lines. But this Python code here can be run multiple times on multiple systems. So what we could do is we could create an Azure batch pool. And within this Azure batch pool, we could essentially specify a virtual machine of a specific specification, and we could define multiple of these to actually come up. Maybe they've even got custom images built into them. This Azure batch pool, we can then go and feed our code into something like this Python code, fire it at all of these virtual machines in one go, have all of these virtual machines compute and process that code, and maybe drop their outputs once their code is completed to some sort of central storage account within the infrastructure. And maybe that storage account is going to have our outputs on it. The advantage of something like Azure Batch is the fact that this can be scaled to as big as you want. If you want to go faster, if you want to process more code, if you want to do more things, it's really just a matter of money. If you've got more money to throw out the problem, you can complete that problem faster and more efficiently and get the output sooner than you would if you didn't have as much money to spend. Azure Batch is actually very simple to set up. So let's go straight and have a look at setting up a very simple Azure Batch pool and running some code inside one of these Azure Batch pools. So I'm over here on my Azure portal. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to look for Azure Batch accounts up here. So we're going to go into Batch accounts at the top. Remember in Azure, just use the search button at the top. It's much easier to find things. And we're going to create a batch account, a very, very simple one. So in this batch account, what we're going to do is we're going to use an existing resource group that I've got down here. I've got an AZ305M2. And my batch account name, this needs to be unique inside Azure. So for example, my batch account is actually already taken because it's connected to a URL at the end of this. We can see it's connected to eastus.batch.azure.com. So I'm going to name it Mike Batch. Uh, and we'll use something unique. Oh, that is unique. Awesome. So we can see Mike Batch here is actually unique because I've got a green tick. Uh, I thought that may not have been unique. We'll leave this in location of East US for the moment. There are multiple locations where I could deploy these batches if I wanted to. And if I really wanted to, I could deploy multiple batches to different locations. Just bear in mind, if you do do this, cost is normally a big factor. The differences in price between running things in somewhere like East US and running things in somewhere like India over here is vast. India normally has really, really, really cheap data centers for actually running these virtual machines. If on the other hand, you run in somewhere a little more expensive, maybe Australia, or maybe even somewhere like Oslo over here in Norway, uh, things get a little bit cheap, a little bit more expensive. 
If you're not bothered about where the data gets processed, think about actually outsourcing that data to somewhere else. Okay, so what else we need to do here is select a storage account. So we're going to select a storage account at this point, and we're going to create a new storage account for this. We're going to call this My Batch Storage, but again, this is going to need to be unique, so that's not going to work for me. So I'm going to call this Mike Batch Storage and hope nobody has taken that name. Nope, that's already in use. Mike Batch Storage uh, Demo. Will that work? Yes, that works great. Mike Batch Storage Demo.core.windows.net. Uh, we can leave this as general purpose v1, but most of the time we still want general purpose v2 here. General purpose v1 has kind of been retired, so I wouldn't be choosing that at the moment. It shouldn't really be a default option, but still. And we're going to leave this as locally redundant storage. We don't need any special fast hyper redundant storage here. Let's click OK. And we're going to click review and create, and we're going to just build this brand new batch account. We're going to ignore all of the other services. It's going to build all the networking for us. It's going to build those advanced options for us. Now, if you go and look at Azure Batch uh, on a commercial level, you're going to need to set up things like authentication. You're going to need to set up things like managed service accounts to be able to communicate to this and add big layers of security around this. This is just a very quick demo to show how batch accounts actually can get deployed and how we can actually use them to run some code so we can get an idea of how they work and how they look inside the Azure portal itself. Just like everything else in Azure as well, this can also be built out using bicep templates, using ARM templates. Heck, if you really wanted to, you could go and use the Graph API to build this out. Okay, so our deployment is now complete. We're going to go to this resource over here and we can now see we're connected to our batch account. There's my account endpoint, mikebatch.east.us.batch.azure.com. That's great. And if we go down here, we can actually see things like our quotas. So one of the things you might want to do with um, with Azure Batch is make sure it doesn't run away with you. Um, and you might want to actually go and limit the amount of CPUs that can actually spin up here and the types of machines that can spin up. I've just got down here some AV2 series. Uh, and I've got a quota of six. Depending on what I wanted to actually deploy, you could get into some really big virtual machines running at the back end here. This was just the default within that wizard. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could go and start to spin up these NV series machines. And these are incredibly powerful. These have got NVIDIA GPUs at the back end of them. These are great for crunching through machine, one, machine learning workloads. Or if you're doing fancy things with AI, uh, you might want to be crunching through those uh, there. Too, but bearing in mind that the, the cost for those is quite large. So make sure you are keeping a very big eye on your costs before you actually start deploying large virtual machines here. Now, what we actually need to do is we need to go and create a pool. And we're going to go to add a pool in here. And uh, within this pool ID, we're just going to use my pool. Very, very simple pool name. It doesn't really need to be called anything else. We could even call the display name as my pool as well. So under the operating system, um, under the publisher, we're going to go and choose Microsoft Windows Server. We could use Linux servers here if we wanted to. Uh, we can use um, something called Microsoft CBL Mariner. Uh, this is actually quite interesting. If you go and search for micro, whoops, Microsoft Mariner here, notice this is Microsoft Mariner Linux. This is a Microsoft Linux operating system. It's used in a few locations in Azure to do various different things, but it is actually an internal Linux distribution for Microsoft's cloud infrastructure and edge products. Linux developed by Microsoft, and we can use it down here if we want to. But I'm just going to select Windows Server, just basic Windows Server, and we're going to use here uh, 2019 Data Center Core uh, with a small disk, so the smallest possible Windows Server we could use. And we're going to scroll down to this OS disk storage down here. And we're going to make sure this is on. Change it from premium LRS to standard LRS. Actually, you know what? Since this is a demo, I'm going to leave this on premium LRS for the moment so it runs a little quicker. That's fine. And the node size itself, let's have a look. This virtual machine size, what are we going to use? We're going to use some standard A1 machines. Now, Again, the faster the machines, the the faster this process is actually going to work. Uh, if I want to use standard A1s, that's fine. In fact, I'm just going to leave this on uh, DS2, um, D2S v3 machines for the moment, two vCPUs and eight gigs worth of RAM. 
I should have a limit for that. And then underneath our scaling options down here, let's scroll down a little bit further. Where are we? Uh, do, 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 do. Scaling options, there we go. We are going to do targeting for dedicated nodes, two dedicated nodes here at the moment. So it's only going to spin out just two virtual machines for me. I could get a bit further than this if I wanted to. I could even use spot or low priority nodes if I wanted to be really, um, uh, re really worried about cost and actually bring that right down. If you haven't seen my video on spot nodes, uh, go check that out. Uh, how to save lots and lots of money in virtual machines. And you can you can knock off like 80% of the cost of a virtual machine if you use spot nodes down here. So we're going to accept these remaining defaults down here. We're going to leave all of these no placements to regional. We're going to leave all these uh, into no communications to no. Uh, we don't need them to talk to each other. That's fine. Uh, I'm just going to say I already have a Windows license as well because I'm using this all for testing. And we're going to select OK. And that's going to build out my pool. Uh, once that pool is built out and ready, we can actually go and create a job and fire a job against that pool. So that's going to take just a couple of minutes to resize that um, resize that machine and make sure that's ready. While that's getting along, we can go into jobs. And in here, we're going to go and create a job. So let's go and add a new job. And within this jobs page, we're going to use the job ID of my job. Uh, we're going to use something very, very simple here. It doesn't matter. I could call it whatever I want. And on the pool, I'm just going to select the pool that I've just created and hope it's there. Yep, it's there. It's still allocation stage of resizing, so it's still getting going, but I can select it at the moment. So we're going to OK that. So we have a job called My Job inside here. And inside this job, what we're going to do is we're going to drop into it and we're going to go and create a task inside the job. We're going to give this something to do. So I'm going to go to Add on here. And in this task, we're going to call this task My Task. This is where we actually give it the code, the things that we actually want it to do. So we could do some fancy stuff down here. We could run some Python. We could go and run some installations. We could go and set this image up. We could do all sorts of fun things down here. But what I want to do is I just want to run this very, very simple command. That's all. The command is going to say set AZ batch and timeout and timeout 90 is equal to null. That's all. Uh, this isn't actually going to do anything. Uh, but what it's going to do is it's going to produce a very simple standard output for me on here. So this is code that's running on each of these VMs and it's going to do this for 90 seconds and after 90 seconds that code's going to complete and it's going to end the job task on here. So let's scroll down here and click submit. What we can also do is we can set up multiple tasks as well if we want to run them in run them one after the other. So if I take another task called my task two, use the same code inside here and actually submit that, what we've now got is we've got two active tasks, one going to run after the other. So if I hit refresh on there, both of these are actually currently set to uh, active and these tasks are ready to go in. So we can actually see these two active tasks are running. Oh, well, they're not running yet. They're waiting to actually run. They're waiting to pass into that pool. We can see that this my task one is currently in the running state. And if we refresh this, there we go. You can see we've got one active and one running. Once my task one has actually completed, what we can do is we can go into that task and see the output of it. So we'll keep that going now for 90 seconds and we'll wait for it to complete. OK, we can now see that our task one has completed, but our task two is still running. That's been passed to one of those nodes. If I go into my task one, we can actually see the standard output here of that task is completed. And that standard output is just showing the output of the command that we actually ran. If we come back to the overview of our Azure Batch account down here, we can actually see over the data for the last hour, the vCPU minutes that have actually been used. We can go and see any failed tasks and we can go see any current node states inside here as well. So we can see that I have a starting node count of one, we have a running node count of one, and we have two tasks that have actually been run on here too. If we go into the My Pool, 
and, and click through. We can also see a node heat map. My two nodes here are currently set to idle. Uh, that's because those tasks have actually just completed uh, and have run onto my machine and run on those machines already. But you could also see that these would be color coded dependent on if they were running or creating or starting. So if we have lots and lots and lots of nodes within our pools, we could see nicely with this color grid uh, exactly which machines are currently in use and which ones are not. We could also scale this if we wanted to. So if I wanted to scale my pool, I could very quickly go from two to four nodes inside here. Um, and change that to a fixed scale and save it. And now I don't have two nodes, I have four nodes and I've got a bigger pool that I can make use of. So hopefully there you can see that Azure Batch is actually quite simple to use and set up through the Azure portal. The complex bit is actually writing code that would work effectively within an Azure Batch environment and deciding where the outputs of that code is actually going to go. There's some great examples on the Azure Batch website and there's some great examples in the Azure Batch documentation where you can go and run some test Python code yourself. So check out Microsoft Learn and check out some of the Azure Batch documentation on there. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.